Hello guys and welcome to the James Sinclair Q&A show live here. Well it's not live no, when you're listening to it but it might be live. Uh, no it won't be live at all. I don't no. know why I said that Chance. But yes this is a <laughs> business podcast. It's a Q&A show where we take all the comments off of YouTube, Linky Dink, Facebook, Twitbook, all of those things. Yep. Uh, and we, Shudders is the quiz master. He reads out the questions and I answer them. But today is a special day because Gary Das, um, who owns a business called... Active Mortgage. Active Mortgages. Uh, and they do grocery and online shopping. That really do they? <laughs> they do mortgages. Um, and uh, he's going to be joining me because um, he's a member of the Entrepreneurs Network uh, and he's building up his personal brand and influence and stuff like that. He's wrote a book here. I don't know if you can see that on that shot and that shot and that shot. Which yeah. one do we want? It? Yeah, that, that was fun. That's there cool. we go. There it is. This is his book. Do you want to hold it up, Gary, so we can get a look at how gorgeous he looks as Model. well with his pecs that he's got there. <laughs> and the man is amazing form. Um, uh, so jealous, that, are you? Jealous. Pardon? Jealous. I am man. jealous. I, I wouldn't want to have a fight with him either. Um, so, Gary, just quickly, just quickly tell us about your business. You've got about three seconds. One, two, three. Brilliant. <laughs> just, uh, just give us a little rundown into your business. Uh, Specialised in helping self-employed people to buy property. Obviously, released the book and done over 100 million in lending in the last two years. Wow, 100 million in lending in the last two years. That's super duper impressive. Uh, got the book out, and you're doing quite a lot of videos and stuff, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Um, All around self-build, residential, buy-to-let development, commercial. <coughs> cool, cool, cool. Shebang. He's got employees. Uh, he's a serious business owner, so he's very well qualified to be on the Q and A show as a special guesty westy. Um, I think we're going to kick straight into it now. The way That's this good. works as well. Uh, is we give a prize um, uh, to someone as well that we like their question. Chudders gets to decide right. who that is. Uh, three of them are anonymous today, so we don't know who they are. So two out of the five questions uh, we can give the the uh, the Prezi Wezzies to. So Chudders, come on, hit us with question number one. Let's so, go. First question by Rowan Avery. Hey, James, wanted to know your thoughts on travelling. I've heard a lot of people say it helped them figure out their purpose and gain perspective but it would be nice to get your opinion. Thanks for doing these videos. It provides a lot of motivation. Oh, thank you very much. And his name again, Chuds? Um, Rowan. Hello, Rowan. Um, Ch- uh, let's just ask Gary, have you been travelling? Never. No, I've not. Be- I've been on holiday, but I've never done the travelling. Chuds, have you done travelling? Yeah, a little bit, but not. Where have you been? Uh, family holidays, and then been to Barcelona. But you haven't done the... Not like, yeah, not like, yeah, not like whatever. proper travelling. No. And you haven't ever done the uh, stay in a hostel? No, never done that. Never done that, Gary? No. Well, one of my biggest regrets, actually, is Hotel. that I, I threw myself into work at 15, 16. Same. And I wanted to work on Disney Cruise or Royal Caribbean uh, and um, have some fun, really. And then, <laughs> well, well, why is that funny? I don't, I don't, don't get the joke there, Gary. Um, and uh, I wanted to go on and do that stuff. Uh, but I started earning some serious cash, really, from a young age. So um, that stopped me from doing that. Um when I do go on holiday now, we've got a holiday home in Spain, which we haven't been to for 18 months. We're going back in a couple of weeks. We've had, well, Nats and I do go on holiday. I've really got some decent thinking done on holiday. I don't know what it's going to be like now, taking a one and a half year old with us. Um, grandparents. Grandparents. Well, they're, they're coming with us on the next holiday. <laughs> so, yes, we've brought the carers with us. Um, do, do, do you get much holiday time, Gary? Um, I try to at least every quarter. Yeah. Um, even if it's just like a boys' weekend snowboarding, we went in February. Yeah. That's the last one we've had because, like you, I've got a six month old little boy as well. Wow. Um, but yeah, we're going away in August for 10 days. So and can you I'm think then? Looking forward to that. 100%. Yeah. I, I did the same thing straight out of college, straight out of school into work. But well, that, holidays is where you get your time to reflect and actually look back on the business. And you, can you do innovative thinking when you're on holiday or travelling? Yeah, I come back with better ideas. I think if you work consistently all the time, do you not burn out? Absolutely, yeah. I, mean, I burn out regularly. Um, but I get up and fight another day, don't I, Chudders? What about you, Chuds? Do you think when you travel? Um, Good quality well, thinking? I've, when I've been travelling, I've been I never stop filming, do I? So when no. I go places, I make videos and film and photography and that's the reason I go there. So I've never actually gone on holiday just to not do anything. Interesting. So I've, yeah, I probably relax and to take a step back just at home. I do that quite a lot anyway. Super duper. I think my, my, my answer to the question, Chance. Yeah, would is, you, does it help figure out purpose and gain perspective? Yes, I do. Yeah. I think when you give yourself the good quality thinking time, you don't need to travel for this. Uh, although I think really getting out of environment, one of the big things I always talk about is when you get out of environment, your quality thinking improves one million percent. So if you want to get your thinking improving, get out of environment. Good question. Charles hit me with number two. Yeah, so 
Um, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Paulo Benefito. Paulo Grady. Paulo Maybe. Grady. He's been on screen, so you can ITV see. ITV one. Yeah. Hi, Hi, James. What's your opinion? On, what's your opinion on minimum wages? Ah, uh, Paul. So that I've got a, a thing about this. We we pay minimum wage to some of our people in our business. Um, I think businesses at the service sector are getting squeezed all the time uh, and the cost of running businesses are going up you're seeing Poundland have gone House of Fraser are cutting 31 stores um, loads and loads of retail businesses that are in that space have to do that because they're actually scratching to survive and you're seeing more and more self-serve come in now if you are a minimum wage person what you need to do is try and upskill yourself so that you can get the next run of jobs up um, and if you're in a minimum wage position uh, think about what you can learn and build up your expertise so you can go into the next job that isn't minimum wage um, I think there's always going to be minimum wage jobs no one wants to pay minimum wage companies don't want it. I mean good companies do not want they want to pay people fairly as much as they can but there is lots and lots of other costs now I mean I always say this when someone earns something you've got to add on 20 25 30 35 40 percent on top of their salary for the real cost of employment so if you pay someone 10 pounds an hour realistically that's costing the business 14 pounds an hour with pension costs national insurers uh, the, the the employers national insurers not just the employees national insurers uh, the pension costs the HR advice the training uh, it's very very difficult so uh, I wish we didn't have to do it. That's what I'm saying. I wish we didn't have to do it, but circumstances force us to do it in some of our lower margin businesses. And that's why over the last few years, I've been harping on about building businesses with margins so that you're not in that trap. What do you think, Gary? I'd say exactly the same thing. I think to err on another side of it, from my side as a small business owner, I don't think there's anything more to cover from what you've said, but from my point of view, like Jack, who's an apprentice who handles my marketing, I paid more than the actual average yeah. for an apprentice because I knew that that was going to get me a better caliber person I mean there's a good friend of mine's a farmer um, and uh, they do fruit picking and he has to pay minimum wage because the supermarkets will yeah. only pay that and because the public won't pay more for the fruit because it's in such a price sensitive thing so it's not just everyone thinks it's the, the big boss or the company that wants to pay low wages it's the market that affects wages as well you know you, if you want everyone to earn you know £20 an hour or £15 an hour in cost of coffee then you've got to pay £8 for your cafe latte and that's the acid test. Are you going to be prepared to pay eight or ten pounds for a cafe latte, um, and or three pound fifty for a bottle of water? You know, and yeah. these things people need to understand that it's the market that affects low wages, not some greedy boss at the top trying to make as much money as possible. It's a good question, that Chuds. What's the next one? Number three. So three more questions from people. That I've asked you personally that yeah. you want me to write down. So. Yeah, I thought these would be good as well because I think, Gary, there's some good answers that you can give to. And I'll speak at loads of business events and these are the same sort of regular questions that yeah. I think would be good for you. So, Chadis, give me number three. So, what's the smartest way entrepreneurs and business owners can get funded? Gary, I think you should go first. Seeing as this is your area. Remit. Depends on what you want funding for. Yep. But I think preparation is the key. Okay. I think too many people expect to get funding today you know if you know you've got business development that you're doing or if you're taking money out to invest in property or you need to get a mortgage yeah. you're actually thinking 12 months ahead what are my accounts going to need to look like next year to achieve that yeah pay the tax that you need to pay don't be afraid of that and then that can actually make your life a lot less stressful later yeah um, now uh, so that's so that's talking about mortgages uh, and maybe the entrepreneur business owner uh, for their personal offer. I just wanted to touch on it for your business. One of the things that I think is so, so important is understanding monthly profit and loss, understanding uh, you know your uh, average customer value um, and your labor to turnover ratio and putting that all into a set of accounts because it's exactly the same for when you're one of our half a million for a cash flow lend to build something in a business um, or buy a business. 
um, it's the same preparation that goes through yep. and having it documented and written down. I think one of the smartest things you can do as a business owner is have a constant evergreen asset and liability statement. Yep. Uh, if you ask for my Gary, I can send it to you tomorrow. Um, it's constantly updated every three months with the values of all my assets, uh, income in. I do a personal... Um, spreadsheet showing all my income from all my companies and what what all my rents going in um, I think that's a really smart thing to do it's a uh, having a live decent detailed business plan uh, so we, we teach our EM members especially ones that I coach or do group coaching with that we've got a live five-year business plan that we can just send to the bank straight away or to private investors investors all of these things then the last thing that makes it all easier is if you pay tax because um, everyone wants to pay as little tax as possible, but you know the government have had a real steer on the Bank of England, all that. If you've got a good SA302 or good EBITDA and good corporation tax, then funders come to you easy peasy. And in any size of business, I get a lot of people who want to, you know, I've got one at the moment, I'm doing 40 grand to refurb his laundrette. Oh, nice. Um, but that is all around EBITDA, it is around the last three years' worth of books, and it's, is that investment going to make a return, as you yeah, said, yeah, business yeah. plan? is key for them to be able to see. So it's interesting, so you're getting that and he won't go to his bank for the 40 grand? No, no, the bank won't give it to him. Why? Um, length of time trading and they're just not happy with the accounts in general, so we've gone to rate setter. Pretty more flexible. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the thing, the banks like an AB type client, whereas if you're a CD and you need, there's a bit of an element of risk, you know, then that's where you would use a a CD lender, for example. And did you meet rate setter through us at one no. of our events? You knew them no. before. Cool. No. Excellent. Good question. What's number four, Chads? I'm going to have a cough. <coughs> oh, dear. <coughs> so nice. So you. Go on, Gary. Do one. Just, you know. <coughs> there we go. Do you think a book is a good way of building profile? Do you it's want to go very appropriate. <coughs> no, not Gary's at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 100%. Uh, I think everyone's not got a book. I think it's the best business card you can possibly have. Yeah. Uh, it shows you're an expert in your chosen subject, and it's something that you can give to your clients, give to people who don't necessarily buy from you now. Yeah. Um, and it's a good way of sharing your knowledge and, and getting the message out there. Yeah. What he said. Um, Completely agree. Yeah. Yeah. I I I, I think um, the the other great thing I love about a book is it allows you to have speaking engagements, um, and I think speaking engagements are one of the smartest uses of time in terms of uh, presenting one to many. Um, so I think speaking engagements are key. And if you can get on stages, if you're good at speaking, that's the caveat to the rule. You want to be very good at it and practice it. And I think the books open the doors for you to do mm. that. Yeah. Last question, Good's is it, Chads? Yep. Do you think influencers are getting bigger than celebrities in terms of brand deals? I do. I think so. Yeah. Um, I think, think, I think well business owners so. are the new celebrities. Yeah, I was going to say we should separate what is a celebrity because modern day celebrities are people with a lot of Instagram followers. Yeah, yeah. Well, so Whereas so 15, so. 25 years ago, celebrity was just TV or yeah. magazines or whatever. True. Interesting that you said Instagram there, Charles. Do you see that that's the yeah, place for influencers? Yeah, I probably would say so. I think Instagram's the, got everyone's attention the most, mm. especially the younger people. Yeah. And I think it's increasing popularity always, isn't it? Like um, Kylie Jenner and Kim Kardashian and like they've got their own TV show but yeah, yeah. like the most followed people on Instagram as well so it shows its level of importance I think for us uh, we want to be a LinkedIn influencer that would be you know because our, our space is more, but we're doing we're, we're really stepping up Instagram aren't we and stepping up to yeah trying to always um, so what do you I don't I suppose in our space in the entrepreneur space I was speaking to Nats again my, my other half the other day talking about Gary Vaynerchuk yeah because um, she don't know who he is, and none of her friends know who he is. Yeah. But in this space of entrepreneurship and business, he is, he is number the one. number one. Yeah. I think people would in England that are business owners would rather go and see him than I don't know one of the dragons yeah. on Dragons like Den. Peter Jones, for example. Yeah. But yeah. ten years ago, that would not have been the case. Our no. Dragons Den, that speaking <clears> thing, you know, if you had Peter Jones there, I mean, still obviously people would be interested in Peter Jones or a Duncan Ballantyne, absolutely, but not. Like to the level of a yeah, the people who know who yeah. Grant Cardone is in Gary Vaynerchuk, yeah. it's, a, it's a bigger deal than absolutely than like mainstream knowing who the dragons yeah. are. Yeah, and I think I think that is although it's just incredible. I mean, we've been doing it thirteen months now, building. 
profile and brand and doing all this stuff. And we still haven't massively broken through, but we would have broken through if we'd have put all of that effort into trying to get on TV for 13 months. Um, we have had some traction, so I think it's a good, it's far more attainable and achievable to build your online profile and brand if you invest what, four or five years to into it whereas if you invest four or five years to try and be a Hollywood movie star you may get nowhere never happen, like, yeah. you might not get anywhere I mean, no. some will um, it might take you you know a lot longer so I, Chudders and I sort of say it's not if it's when yeah. for yeah, us it's right time right yeah. place isn't it to a certain um, degree because you know our back catalogue is building and building on, on a daily basis daily basis <clears> you know? um, so that's very very interesting I think um the influencers have a stronger audience than a celebrity in many ways yeah. as well. Yeah. So Gary Vaynerchuk's audience, like we all watch Gary's videos, um, I think he's fantastic. So like the people that know who Gary Vaynerchuk is are much more willing to go all in on buying one of his new K Swiss shoes rather yeah. than a mainstream celebrity in many ways. So trying to, like Peter Jones, he might be his name might be more famous to most of Britain yeah. but he might not actually get a better brand deal than if Gary Vaynerchuk absolutely so yeah. Gary Vaynerchuk can charge whatever he wants to charge for his books or his speaking gigs or his because the people that are going really want to go see him absolutely or they really Brilliant want fans, that product yeah. So, yeah. so maybe I think modern day influencers like YouTubers that we might not know of that have got 15 million subscribers can get like hell of a good brand deal from a brand yeah, but yeah. everyone else doesn't know who they are so maybe the difference between a celebrity and an influencer I think, I think an influencer can get better brand deals. I think I think celebrities almost look a bit of a one to many as well. They yeah. might cover multiple niches. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, whereas yeah. I know an influencer in the fitness space. I know yeah, an influencer yeah. in the business space. And I think I know, that's only possible and that's, in today's Yeah, it's society. niche it's niche stuff as well yeah. for that side of things. Yeah. So, so here's the here's the thing. I think celebrities, most of them, are very lazy. I think they've missed out a huge opportunity. Yeah, that's what we talk about Will Smith because yeah, cause he's he really dominated Hollywood, didn't yeah. he, for his whole yeah. acting career, and yeah. now he's dominating social media, and he is now the biggest influencer in spectacular fashion, and he's yeah, done yeah, it yeah, so 100%. quick. Yeah, well, because of his profile before, yeah. hasn't he? he? Didn't even need to. You know, he made like a hundred vlogs, and he had like a million subscribers. It's yeah. like we make a hundred vlogs, and we get four viewers. <laughs> no, yeah, it's, 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 he's but. On the same thing, we want to build out off flight. So we're, we're d going to do something with Channel 4, hopefully, at the end of the year, which we can't say what it is. Um, but there'll be a good few million people watch that, and we're doing it solely to build yeah. our Profile. online presence. Yeah. So we're doing stuff offline to boost online, yeah. um, and I think that's where celebrities have missed out. Doing the, the t like, the, say, for a channel, for example, they're completely in charge of that content as well. So it's like once that's out and done, yeah. What can the only way that we can use it is leverage it for your yeah. profile elsewhere for Instagram, YouTube, yeah. Facebook, or whatever. So that's why it's, it's in our control now. Isn't that's it? Whereas, the reaction, though, isn't it? The, the immediate reaction now is you see someone, you know, I saw you and I knew, oh, he owns Marsh Farm. First thing you do is Google somebody. Yeah. So then you see Marsh Farm, then you see images, then you see Entrepreneurs Network, then you go to YouTube, and all of a sudden you've just built yeah. up this massive yeah, well, diary of stuff. Well, what Chad has and I, we've we done a presentation at the last one of our events about the back catalogue so important yeah. that you are Google famous and stuff. So that when that show goes out on Channel 4, that Google, you know, the Google will then come into its own and people will be able to watch a spider web of content, which will, and that, if you don't make and make a start on this and then opportunities come up, you've missed the boat, haven't you? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's good. Okay, Chad, well, question one or two is going to be the winner. Um, Rowan about travelling or Paulo about minimum wage I like the Rowan one about travelling a little bit because, different isn't it yeah, yeah and I think you know getting out of the environment and good quality time to speak so Rowan this is what's going to happen um, one of our team from Entrepreneurs Network they're going to private message you uh, they'll send you a ticket to one of our events uh, they'll send you a couple of my books and a couple of our magazines just for getting involved and taking action and asking a question this has been the Amazing. James Sinclair Q&A show it's episode 5 of the big entrepreneurial show where you can listen rather than watch I just say every video you you say this is the big entrepreneur no matter entrepreneur. what video it is you go this <laughs> well, is the big entrepreneur well show. this is the big entrepreneur show the james sinclair q a <laughs> show uh, don't forget guys if you want to see the full library of all of our content head on over to youtube hit subscribe because we put all the content there uh, and you can watch it and probably be engrossed for quite a long time now yeah, if you wanted quite to a few videos on there now um, i might say a big thank you to my special guest gary das uh, and he's the author of the self-employed mortgage guide uh, especially for business owners and entrepreneurs 
thank you very much and to Chudders and also we've got Jack over there who's filming it for Gary as well uh, so thanks for coming Jack thank you no worries <laughs> uh, we've got him hopefully on microphone we'll be back for episode 6 next week see you soon bye bye thanks bye ta-da